Hello, so this is a Polish DPS 68 vehicle mounted Geiger counter. Now obviously it's not mounted in a vehicle, but um, I really wanted to get one of these because I want to put it on the wall because I thought a frame like this that it fits in would be ideal for wall mounting. So what I'm going to do with this, it won't be done in this video, but what I am going to do is mount it on the wall behind where I normally stream in one of the gaps. So basically I can have this running off of the mains electricity all the time and uh, have a wall mounted Geiger counter. So this is the Polish DPS 68. This one was made in 1972, serial number 0381. So what this is, is basically a 0 to 200 Röntgen per hour uh, Geiger counter that uses, I think it's three different GM tubes in here. It's got a big beefy probe. You could have two probes on this. I'm not sure what that socket did that says WYJ. But S1 and S2 are where you can have diff two different probes on it. Um, this is the range switch, so it does times 0 0.01, times 0 0.1, times 1, times 10, times 100. So on a times 1 scale, it does 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1 and 2. So that's Röntgen per hour. So basically it does the 100 milli Röntgen scale, sort of it's a non-linear sort of logarithmic scale, so obviously it, the numbers go up faster. But then essentially, so 0 to 0 0.5 Röntgen per hour on the main bit of the scale, and then 1 Röntgen and 2 Röntgen, that's on times 1, so obviously times 100, that would be 100 there, 200 Röntgen per hour, 50 Röntgen per hour. And on the lowest scale, uh, the 0 0.01, uh, that will actually register background radiation, because um, the very lowest bit of the scale, if you think 0 0.1 Röntgen per hour, so that would be 100 milli Röntgen, if you divide that by 10, that would be 10 milli Röntgen per hour, and if you divide that by 10 again, because it's the uh, times 0 0.01 scale, that would be 1 milli Röntgen per hour, that lowest bit there. So what I've done is I've connected this up to my variable voltage supply. We'll flick that on. And hopefully you'll see this works. So what we'll do, we'll put it on the test circuit first. So W is off. If we put it to K, that's the test circuit. And there you can see the um, what it's doing is doing the um, sort of alarm flash there. I don't know. Ah yeah, so what you can do with this is moving this switch while it's on the test circuit alters which sort of thing it's doing. So I guess that's just a function check, but we'll go through all of these. Because obviously it uses different Geiger Muller tubes for different ranges inside the probe, but we'll get onto that in a second. Now, annoyingly, I don't think the speaker works in this one. Because I'd have thought it would have been making a really uh, uh, noise like the um, other one does, the RS70, if the alarm was working. But no matter. I don't really want the alarm anyway, but I could probably always replace that speaker. It's probably just a simple piezo speaker. So anyway, what you can have here is the 0 0.5 alarm, which goes off at 0 0.5 milli Röntgen per hour. It's... I don't actually know why that's still flashing there. But... There we go. Maybe that's just a power on light. But anyway, um, so how this works, obviously you've got your different scales. So that will be what makes the alarm sound. So that would be 0 0.5 Röntgen per hour and it sounds the alarm with whatever scale you're on. 1 Röntgen per hour, 2 Röntgen per hour. So when it hits that bit of the scale, it sounds the alarm. So we've got it now on the lowest mode, and as you can see, this is registering background radiation. Hopefully you can see, it might be a bit of an awkward angle. Uh, to see that there, let's see if I can get the uh, camera zoomed in well enough. On the scale, it's quite difficult to actually show this. I'm going to give this a clean up after I've done the video on it, but maybe you can see that there. That's, that's the scale. So what I'm going to do now is here's the really big beefy probe. I need to zoom out. But um, this was obviously mostly designed to be mounted on the front of a vehicle and detect uh, gamma radiation. It has got beta sensitive tubes in it, but the shell on the um, you know case means that beta radiation won't get through it. But anyway, let's get a load of Watermite crystals. Um, and then, you should see in a minute, there we go. 
that will start, because I did have it going earlier. I don't know if it's to do with that alarm switch, but earlier it was working absolutely fine. What about that? So as you can probably see there, it's counting a little bit of radiation from the automite crystals. And if I put those in a different position in a probe, I might be able to get that to go higher and lower. I did manage that early, so it should, um, there we go, that's a bit higher. Obviously this is on the lowest scale at the moment. So if I went up a scale, hmm, that's interesting. It's strange because this was working absolutely fine earlier. Maybe it's a voltage thing. I'll just stop the camera a second. I'm going to get this all out of here anyway. And then I'll just check I've got all the voltage wired up correctly. Because it could be that there's um, sort of a voltage problem somewhere. But... Hmm, right, bear with me then. Right, I thought you might want to actually see the unit itself. So basically the unit itself looks like this. There's your screws where essentially you can mount it onto the frame. And then there's your connectors at the bottom. So I'm not sure what that y, um, WYJ one does. One of my Polish viewers might be able to tell, me, uh, tell you that. But S1 and S2 is obviously where you can have up to two probes on it. And that's the power probe of that one there that says Zasil. And that's where you set it to either 12 or 24 volts for the power supply. What I might do in a minute is set that to 24 volts and then reconnect it. So basically, how this would work was um, you'd have it mounted in there, you'd have your probe obviously attached to either one, or you could have both probes, and the idea is that switch lets you go between the probes. And the idea, for example, could be you'd have probe one inside a tank and probe two outside the tank, and then you could check what the radiation reading was inside and outside the tank by flicking the switch to go between the two probes. So. I don't know if the Soviets ever came up with um, a vehicle mounted Geiger as good as this one because they um, had the DP3 ionisation chamber I believe for vehicle use but that was sort of like a CDV715's range it was like hundreds of milli Ronkgen to like 200 Ronkgens whereas this obviously does background radiation as well pretty much like not all that noticeably but the lowest scale on this is the background radiation scale you know, like at the bottom would be background and then anything above normal uh, would make it go up. So let's um, try and repower this up. And we could also try the probe in a different connector. So basically there is a wire this came with. That's this one. It obviously connects, um, you know, but I don't really need to use the wire because it's easy it's just to connect the crop clips directly to the thing. So let's just try that again. on and what I'll do is make sure I've got the voltage set correctly um, let's set that at exactly 12 volts there we go but on the uh, variable voltage transformer let's get that back in frame and then let's um, turn this on so that's circuit check Anyway, let's go to that mode, and then go to actual Geiger counter mode. I've got the check source still next to the probe at the moment. Oh, but the probe's not plugged in, is it? So that would help. So let's plug the probe in. Um, and we've got it set to S1. I don't know if this has an internal GM tube in it. Because some units like this sometimes have an internal uh, unit in the box itself as well as the probes, but I doubt it, but it's possible I guess. But maybe that's what that does, W... Unless one uses the probe and one uses the internal. I don't actually know exactly with this 
how it all functions. As I said, I, I understand the basics of it, but these are a bit more complicated units than the infantry Geigers. M interestingly, most militaries had uh, far more complex vehicle mounted systems than they did for the infantry ones. The idea is because weight and space weren't as much of an you know, issue if you were mounting this in a helicopter or a tank. I suppose space is still a bit of an issue, but I mean, compared to like an infantryman who has to carry everything else as well. You could make, you know, more complex units in that sense. But one of the other uses of this, as I said, was to mount on a sort of bunker wall and have one probe outside, one probe inside, and measure what your radiation is inside and outside the bunker. So, let's... Yeah, so I'm interested because I thought the proggy would be the alarm function. Because this isn't too dissimilar to the DP-75 sort of thing. But unless, unless there's different sensitivity things. Because I know some vehicle things have it like, if you're inside a tank, you have multiplier functions for sort of how much shielding you'd have. So maybe that's a thing on it as well, I don't know. But when that's set to great, you know, greater than 2, and then I have that set to 0 0.01, that's definitely responding as it should do with background radiation. And the, um, as you can probably see there, the uh, sort of autonite on the uh, Pro. So if I put the autonite there, it goes up even higher, because that's more of a sweet spot on the Pro, I imagine. It's probably closer to where the um, Geiger Muller tube is in the probe. So if I go to that scale, see this is where... I'm a bit confused because that shouldn't go that high. So, hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I'll um, have to play about with this quite a bit, but I mostly want this as just a visual unit to sit on the wall. Um, let's just try putting the probe into the other socket and see what happens. Now, can I put that into the other socket as well? Let's try it in the WJ. It's a quite firm probe to disconnect, but. Let's just, yeah, try and see what happens if I plug this in various sockets. So, that, interestingly, is still giving that same reading. So that's strange. Yeah, anyway, I'll um, do a later video on this when I've all figured it out, but I thought a lot of you might find this interesting. Um, and the logbook's here as well. It seems to actually be working in terms of the functions, so... Um, I don't know if this covers instructions again, but you can see there that Bartman um, did some instructions on it, uh, tests on it. But yeah, uh, there's all like the records from it. Yeah, so I bought this from B-Store, he didn't send it me for free, I actually bought it because um, I saw he had some for sale and thought, oh, I really want one of these just because it will look good on the wall. So I'm going to try and play about with some more, obviously not on camera, and get it all functioning correctly. Um, and then, hopefully, I can do a video sort of demonstrating it mounted on the wall. I want to give this a good clean as well because obviously some of this is a bit grubby where it's like a uh, 30, 40, 50, 50, 1972, so that's nearly 50 years now, yeah. So anyway, uh, there's that. I'm going to see if I can play about with it and get some more of the functions going. And um, yeah, there you go. So that was a Polish basically vehicle mounted uh, Geiger counter system, the scimitar system, whatever you want to call it. But the idea is basically it just uses these probes that have various GM tubes on them. I don't know, can I get this probe to unscrew? Because I assume that the probe would, uh, if I get this sort of sock off of it, the rubber sock, I assume the pro cover might actually come off and then we can have a look at the tubes inside. Yeah, that bit looks like that might be where it unscrews, but it might be one of those ones that's just on really tight. Yeah, I think it's the case of that is really tight on there, but... Yeah, anyway, actually I reckon that collar has to come off as well first. Yeah, looking at that. Ah, 
I wonder. Is that not tight enough on the probe? That could be a thing. But yeah, I'm going to have a lot of a plane about with this, and you can certainly get the spare probes and spare GM tubes for these probes. So uh, I'm going to have a good play about with this, and um, yeah, then hopefully later on can do um, a video where I've actually got working one of these. But it's an interesting thing, but yeah, basically, um, you can see how this kind of was more functional than the DP-66, um, and then like a lot of its features were carried on to the DP-75 infantry unit in terms of the ranges and whatever, except for that went to 500 Ronken, not 200 Ronken. Yeah, there we go.